Hey guys. So some of you may have bought this KD Box 2 Kadena Miner only to find out that maybe a month later it wasn't going to be profitable. But these are definitely still profitable if the electricity is free and that's what this video is about. So we did a video about GPU mining on solar. Now we're going to do one about ASIC mining on solar. And today I've got a a different charge controller I'm playing with and kind of a different setup. I'm going with 24 volt and then converting the 24 volts to 12 with this converter. But first I want to thank Musk Miners for providing this KD Box 2 for us to test with. They sell mining hardware. They've got mining hosting and crypto consulting. And the really cool thing about these guys is the energy that they use is provided by flare gas at oil wells. So they capture the gas that would normally just be burned off and wasted, and they pump that into a generator and it provides power to their mining hosting. All right, now back to the experiment. So I already got, went ahead and hooked everything up. I've got solar going in. I've got the 24 to 12 volt DC converter here. And then I've got the KD box two, and it's running. And then for batteries, I'm using these little 12 volt, 12 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries from Time USB. And what I've did is I've connected four in series and parallel. So two are in series for 24 volt, and then those are parallel together. If we look at the manual for these batteries, we can see that we can continuously discharge and charge 12 amps. So with them in parallel, that doubles to 24 amps. So we can charge and discharge at 24 amps with these batteries. This is a Victron 100 volt 20 amp charge controller. So this charge controller won't exceed uh, the capabilities of, the, of these batteries. This charge controller will only do a maximum 20 amps charging. These batteries can be charged at up to 24 amps. So we're safe. That's one thing that you want to consider when selecting your batteries. Now, if you do something like this, you don't have to use these exact same batteries. I just grabbed these because they seem kind of like a simple, inexpensive solution. You can use larger batteries if you'd like. I only care about the batteries just to make it run smoothly throughout the day. I, I'm not trying to make it run overnight. It's not going to run overnight, actually. With these uh, batteries right here, we're looking at about a total of 600 watt hours of energy storage capacity. And this KD Box 2 has two different power modes. It has a 400 watt mode and it has a 240 watt mode. So with 600 watts worth of battery, this thing, if you have it on the low power mode, is only gonna run a few hours on these batteries anyway. Let's take a look at the solar charge controller. This one is really neat because it has Bluetooth. And so therefore we can pull up a Bluetooth. We have a Bluetooth app and it shows us exactly what's going on. This is how much power we're pulling in from solar. So we're pulling in 425 watts currently. It has actually fully charged our batteries. Well, it's gotten close to fully charging because it's in absorption mode. It's not in bulk mode any longer meaning that it's pretty much fully charged, but it's just gonna uh, keep, it, keep it at this voltage level to let it soak in just a little bit more. It shows that our load output is running 250 watts. So basically the KD box is pulling 250 watts through this converter here. So this converter is probably about 95% efficient. Uh, it, it is getting a little warm actually. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea to put a fan on that. And then we can look over here because I've got the miner pulled up and we can see that the miner is actually hashing. We're hashing at, uh, it looks like 3.3 terahash. And then we can look at it on the, on the pool. So we're doing about 3.24 terahash on the mining pool. I just hooked this up today. I consider this an experiment more than a how-to video, guys. So uh, if you go out and buy some of this stuff that I've got to duplicate it, then you're experimenting with me. You know, I don't know if this thing is lasts for very long. It may not be very stable. It may blow out, things like that. So you definitely uh, consider this really just totally experimental. Let's go into, I want to show you how I've got the, the battery set up. So I've got it set to 24 volts. 
Uh, the max charge is 20 amps. That's the maximum charging ability of the solar charge controller. I just set the battery preset to smart lithium, lithium iron phosphate. Uh, I've used that in the past with these kinds of controllers and that works perfectly fine with lithium iron phosphate batteries, which is what those are right there. Uh, and then just the, the default settings here, this 28.4 volts and 27 volts for the float and absorption voltage. Uh, just leave those all default really. And when you set this battery preset, it'll set those for you. So that was easy. I just basically just go in and set it 24 volt and select the smart lithium, lithium iron phosphate preset. Now on the load output, this is what controls the power going to the ASIC miner because you don't want it just to run all the time and run the batteries all the way down to nothing. Uh, you, you need to allow this controller to turn on the load and turn off the load when appropriate. So on the load output, I've selected, it uh, typically is on this always off, uh, but I've selected this algorithm one. I'm not sure what the CONV stands for, but what it does is it will turn off the load at, at less than 22.2 volts. So when the battery is down below 22.2 volts, it'll turn off the load. And when the battery charges back up to 26 or greater than 26.2 volts, it'll turn it back on. So as you see right now, since we've pretty much already charged the battery up, we're only pulling 249 watts from solar. And that's because that's how much wattage the load or the ASIC miner is basically pulling. So if I was to disconnect solar for a period of time, so we'll do that here. We can see that uh, we don't have any power coming from solar. We're basically pulling power out of the battery. So we're pulling 9.3 amps out of the battery. So if we let that suck power out of the battery for a while, and then we plug the solar back in, we'll see the solar jump up five, 600 watts. Now let me show you what I'm using for solar. So these are two 435 watt commercial grade solar panels. And if you guys are gonna do this, I suggest that you don't buy the 100 watt panels that uh, may be very common on Amazon or even at you know your local hardware store or big box shop. I would not buy those because they're not a very good deal. They might seem like a very a good deal, like they maybe they seem like they're less than $100 and that's something that you could afford to get into, but it's not very much power. 100 watts, it's not a whole lot. And you can find panels like this on the used market for almost the same price as the 100 watt panels. And this is like four times as much power. So I would stay uh, uh, clear from those 100 watt panels to equal the same power of these two panels right here with those 100 watt panels that you always see, you would need eight of them. Just the cost, you know, you're gonna end up paying like $800 for eight of those panels when you could probably pay maybe two or $300 for two panels like this. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna let this kind of drain the batteries down for a little while, and then we'll come back and hook the solar back up and see how much solar we're producing. All right, guys, it's been a little while and we drained some, some of the battery down a bit. Let's plug it back in and see how much wattage totally we'll be pulling. There we go, we're starting to ramp up. About 547. We're back into bulk mode. So that limit, that 550 watt limit is most likely due to this charge controller only allowing 20 amps. Yeah, we're pulling like nine amps through the load and we're pushing 11 amps into the battery. So that equals 20 amps. Now you could also, instead of running the 24 volt, you could run 48 volts. I probably will experiment with that so we'll do another video where i run this at 48 volts i would have to reconfigure this battery bank to not be in series parallel but all in series to give me 48 volts uh, this controller here is capable of doing 48 volts however this device will not do 48 volts so i'll have to use something else but yeah basically just get a idea of how I have this connected. I've got the batteries here in series parallel. 
Uh, they just run directly straight into the charge controller battery port. Uh, typically you want to have a fuse. This charge controller has a, a fuse built in right here. It's a built in 25 amp fuse. So you really don't have to have an external fuse. Uh, then I have the solar coming into the PV inputs, which are just leading outside, out of my sunroom to the solar panels that are outside. And I have uh, the 24 to 12 volt DC, DC, DC to DC converter connected directly to the load port. The load port on this charge controller is capable of doing 20 amps by itself, but that only is at 12 or 24 volts. For whatever reason, if you go to 36 or 48 volts, you can only do one amp. So we'll have to figure something else out when we do the 48 volt system as far as the load, how to control the load. Now, typically, again, you do want a fuse on this. And luckily, there is a fuse built in to this device. If we open it up, it is internally fused. But again, it's not a bad idea to fuse externally as well but we can take a look here and see. One thing that I want to note too is if you did go 48 volts, this 50, 550 watt limit would be busted. It would actually be 1100 watt limit. So you'd be able to pull in 1100 watts from the solar by going 48 volts instead of 24 volts. So that's one of the nice benefits of uh, a higher voltage is uh, 48 volts at 20 amps will give you well over a thousand watts whereas 12, uh, 24 volts at uh, 20 amps will max you out around 550. Alright so let's open this thing up and I'll show you that it's fused internally. See there it does have a 30 amp fuse on its little board. Yeah it remains to be seen if this thing will survive and this thing says, you know, it'll do a 360 watts. So you can definitely, you can run this thing in the low powered mode, the 240 watt mode, but you wouldn't be able to do the 400 watt mode using this guy. Yeah, but I, I would definitely probably, I'd probably leave this off and just put a fan right over this thing just to keep it cool. All right, guys. So I think I'm just going to let this run for a bit maybe a several days and see how it does and then follow up do another video possibly with the 48 volts and see how it does uh, but just to recap this is running asic mining uh, off solar and it's really direct dc so we're not converting it to ac and then back from ac to dc we're doing it much more efficiently by not doing all the AC to DC conversion. Because in the AC and DC conversion, you're gonna lose a lot of power. You could lose 20%, 30%, up to 40% of your power just in that AC to DC conversion. So it's very, very ridiculous. Again, I wanna give a shout out to Musk Miners for providing this hardware for us to, to do these tests with. And also I wanna give a shout out to Time USB for providing us these batteries to do this test with. All right, guys, so I think that's gonna be it for this video, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.